Right. Period. Good evening. Please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 31 March 2014 Board of Selection meeting, Town of Hampton. First item, number one, is a public hearing, RSA 31 colon 95 dash small e, Roman 2. One, to accept a gift in excess of $5,000 in the town's behalf, a sidewalk dedication on Ashworth Avenue, 275 Ocean Boulevard. Mr. Welch, could you please give the background before we ask for public comment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as part of the construction at 275 Ash uh, Ocean Boulevard, there is a sidewalk in the rear on Ashworth Avenue that needs to be constructed uh, as a separation between uh, Mrs. Mitchell's and this new building as far as egress and ingress and, and for their parking. And uh, I believe that Mr. Coronati is here to uh, address the plan. And, and uh, the question is, will the town accept that gift uh, which is in excess of $5,000 for the construction of that portion of the sidewalk. Thank you, sir. Mr. Coronati, the floor is yours. <laughs> All right, I'll just try to quickly explain where we're looking at. This is a colored rendering of a site plan for 275 Ocean Boulevard. The, the brown area is the proposed building. Uh, and right now there's a wide open curb cut from the access into the back of McKeon's property, which is the access they use for the parking lot in the summertime, all the way through to the parking spaces on Mrs. Mitchell's. Uh, it's about an 80 foot long section where there's no sidewalk and it's all just open pavement. So to separate our driveway entrance from their parking spaces, we're proposing a short, uh, about 17 foot long section of sidewalk just so that people have a spot to stop as uh, as they're letting cars turn in uh, for safe harbor and it uh, makes for a safer access plus separates our driveway from Mrs. Mitchell so people don't get confused and drive into the back of their site and they need to drive into ours. So uh, it's just that location here is all we're looking for. Thank you, sir. Uh, just uh, by way of explanation, Joe, <coughs> is this proposed to be asphalt or concrete? We have uh, drawn it as concrete right now because it's concrete on either side of uh, sidewalks leading into and out over all concrete. Thank you. Is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, Selectman Wilson. Joe, I can't tell very well from there, but you've got the parking lot in the back. The purple is the parking lot. Yes. For the for 275, and then you're showing that little stretch of sidewalk people going to drive over the sidewalk to get in you're not going to have a curb cut where where are the cars going to come off Ashworth Avenue if you don't mind if I could bring it up closer to you that's the uh, so the we have a 24 foot wide curb cut right on Ashworth Avenue. yeah and then this is the small section oh of the we're talking about okay here. so that's coming in okay then I have another question for you you're you're asking, um, <coughs> I guess, to pick up the commercial waste from the six or eight um, commercial units that are going to be in the structure. But where are you going to put the carts? Are they mm -hmm. all going to fit with the spacing required for the carts? Are they going to fit on that piece of sidewalk? Because you're going to have to have two and a half to three feet between each cart. Right, we have uh, we have two areas of sidewalk. There's about uh, 15 feet of sidewalk here. Right there. Okay. There's this section of sidewalk. Okay. Uh, but the we have two trash rooms in the building. There's trash rooms A and B. Yeah, that's uh, for residential. These are for commercial. Those are for commercial. And so the the trash containers are stored in those trash right. rooms. Right. And, and they'll have to wheel them out, right? Correct. The uh, the units 101 and 102 will most likely take their trash uh, carts from trash room A and wheel them out onto Ocean Boulevard through their through their uh, units. Okay. And then these three units will most likely wheel them out to Ashworth Ave 
So the track okay, will be separated. so it's not going to be all one way or all the other way. That's correct. So it's you'll much have shorter to come from trash room A and go back. To okay. The unit. So you'll have adequate separation between carts. Yes. Not all crammed together in one spot. Yes. Okay. Anything else, Selectman? No, thank you. Selectman Griffin, please. Uh, <coughs> I was going to ask: uh, Is this? Have you talked with the abutters? This is fine with them. On the, um, the coordination with Mrs. Mitchell's and yes. the, I personally have not spoken with the Mitchell's, but I, I believe the applicant, the Greens, I think Michael Greens in the audience, but I believe they've been in coordination with them, uh, and they're using the same builder. Witcher Builder has constructed their building, and he's also doing this building, so there's <coughs> uh, there is some coordination that has to take place between the two properties. That's all I have to ask. Thank you. Mr. Bartle, sir. Are we talking about the trash issue now? Or no. Is that and, that and let, me, let me just bring that up. We're, we're going to keep you on board. We're going to bump you okay. up to talk trash. Okay. <coughs> I got no questions on the sidewalk. <coughs> Thank you. No questions on the sidewalk. Question. Thank you. Uh, does this require a motion? Yes. Okay. Does the board have a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Thank you. I'll okay. second it. And there's a second by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Um, Yes, is there a stipulation in there on maintaining, and I love the concrete sidewalks, but there is a stipulation in there to have <coughs> that sealed before it's accepted I'm, I'm, by I'm the unaware town? of that. You can ask the engineer, please. The, we're proposing that the sidewalk would become town sidewalk. Right, but being you're going to seal it because we've had a continuing problem with concrete sidewalks that haven't <coughs> been maintained. They haven't been sealed, so they're deteriorating. You're going to be putting a, a seal coat on top of it when, when it's finished? We had not proposed to, but we can, you know, one-time application, and then the town will take <coughs> over the maintenance yeah. of that. Yeah. I, I think we could do so that. The motion, I guess, could be amended to say that the uh, it's accepted with the condition that there be a seal coating uh, satisfactory to the director of public works. An initial coating. An initial one-time yeah. yes. coating satisfactory yes. to the public works directors. Yeah. You accept that? Yes, sir. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. That was a tough evening, Joe. Yeah. Joe, please stay seated right there. Uh, what we're going to do under appointments under 52, Joe Coronati, Jones and Beach, uh, <coughs> a 275 Ocean Boulevard refuse collection request. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, it appears that I guess going forward as well with all projects at the beach uh, that will be coming forth, and I believe the policy that you'd like to have us do is come before you to have you. Uh, agree to accept the trash from commercial uh, uses that are proposed at the beach. So the uh, first floor of this building is proposed to all, to every one of the units is to be commercial. And, um, and as the policy is at the beach that I understand is that the town picks up commercial trash along Ocean Boulevard. <coughs> um, and we're here tonight just to, for the uh, board to accept that for this site as well, uh, as they have done in other sites uh, along Ocean Boulevard. Thank you. And this is not a public hearing. This is scheduled under appointments. So I will go to you, Selectman Wilsey, please. When you say trash, Joe, what do you mean? Do you mean waste and recycling? Or are you just lumping? Because waste and trash is solid waste. And right. I guess I am lumping them together. The, we're, we would have separate recycling containers yes, and so separate uh, uh, refuse right. containers. And the understanding in this particular complex would be that the residential waste, like I believe your, um, uh, the other development, which I can't think of at the moment, the sea, uh, sea, sea spray, spray. Yes. Uh, ju the residential waste would be removed at the expense of the condominium owners. That's correct. So you're just talking commercial here. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? No, I just wanted to clarify. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. So Selectman understand. Griffin, please. So this is this is the same way we did it at, at the sea spray, <coughs> with with collection of the mm -hmm. commercial trash. Okay. okay, that was Select me. Waddell. Is that? Uh, does this require a motion? Or just stay there? No. Well, this but this leads to a a thought that I just wanted to leave mm -hmm. with the board here. This is a, an existing area that has been serviced before. It's just being rebuilt, <coughs> but we need to give direction before much more time elapses to the planning board from this board as to our uh, wishes and our stand on uh, picking up waste from new developments. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, I, ma I, would, I would suggest that the board uh, take a vote so that uh, the board can be on record approving the proposed um, trash, uh, that is solid waste, thank you, <laughs> collection uh, regime that uh, is being proposed to the planning board. Could you please uh, 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 state that motion to specifically address the verbiage and the uh, location, please? Uh, yes, the, the, the motion would be that the board would um, ratify the approach uh, being presented to the planning board of uh, as to solid waste collection, meaning that the uh, commercial units would put their refuse out in the uh, containers uh, curbside, whereas the residential units would be uh, required to, um, to uh, dispose of their refuse at their own expense, uh, not through town services. At 275 Ocean Boulevard. At 275 Ocean Boulevard. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Uh, board member prepared to make that motion? Sure. Okay. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Coronati. Appreciate it. Moving back up to public hearing, Roman numeral number two. Public hearing, RSA 40 colon 14 dash small a. First public hearing, one, Litchfield Drive, the <coughs> drainage easement to the town. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, um, the funding board requirements for what we now refer to as Litchfield Drive uh, left a requirement within the subdivision and within their approvals so the town would be the second maintenance person. Uh, they would be the fallback individual for maintaining the existing drain of the proposed drainage system to be put in that new subdivision. Um, that involves acceptance of easements. It involves uh, maintenance of the, uh, the drain system that will be constructed in one of the lower lots. And um, we're required to hold a public hearing on that, actually two public hearings on it, and then at the following the public hearings, required to take a vote as to whether or not to accept the easements. At this point, we're telling uh, the board that we think you should not accept the easements simply because we neither have the manpower, the equipment, or the finances to maintain these extensive, extensive drainage systems. They required maintenance during the course of the year. Uh, they are extremely expensive to rebuild should they uh, need to be rebuilt and the town does not have an appropriation to do that nor do we have the people on board uh, who have the capability of doing the maintenance. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you, sir. Is there any public comment from the audience, please? Mr. Moody. Where is that? It's um, sure. Juniper Road Extension. Right. Howard Moody, Three Thompson Road. <coughs> First one you did over in the West End mm -hmm. where we had responsibility, I asked why, and all the chairman would tell me was because the planning board asked us to. <coughs> I objected we shouldn't have any responsibility, so I second the town manager's recommendation. That was Cassie Lane Arthur, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Any other public comment from the audience? See non selectman Wilson, any comments? I will never agree to accept any such burden on the town of Hampton that developers cause by building in these wet places where they have to have these drainage systems. I <coughs> think it's an outrageous burden for the taxpayers of the town. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin? Selectman Bridal? Nothing. And nothing from Select Model. I have nothing. Have we satisfied the requirements of the public hearing? First public hearing. First of uh, two public hearings. Mm -hmm. First of two. There'll be a sub subsequent public hearing and then a third meeting at which time a vote would be taken. Correct. Wonderful. And in accordance with state law, when must uh, the uh, next hearing be and when must two it weeks. be prior to? Uh, at least 10, but not more than 14 days apart. Two weeks. Wonderful. Mr. Welch, we look forward to you scheduling that. We will, sir. Thank you very much. Moving on, uh, Roman numeral number three, public comment period. And of course, uh, for this board, please introduce yourself as we go around and uh, you offer your public comment period. Thank you. Select Mordell. Jim Mordell. And uh, the only announcement I have is that this coming Sunday, April 6th, at 1 to 4 at the St. James Lodge, there will be a pie palooza. Uh -oh. which is by put on by the chamber and uh, it's a chance to go and, and $8 gets you in 
uh, get you a free beverage and get you to be able to taste all the different pies that are made by the different restaurants. There will also be a pie eating contest and the participants in that are Selectman Bean, myself, Desi from the 401, John Nyan, and uh, Jackson Nicole, I think is the name, the young fellow from Seabrook who was in the movie Bad Grandpa, <laughs> will also be a participant and I'm sure he'll win. So it sounds like it'll be a really good event uh, and a good event to sponsor. Wonderful. Thank you. Just, just one moment. Um, we will have uh, public comment period right after this. Go ahead, please. I, I was going to ask you whether the pies are for eating or throwing. <laughs> eating. <laughs> Mary Louise Wolsey, Vice Chair. Rick Griffin. Rusty Bridle. And your Chair, Phil Bean. Uh, public comment period. Those with comment from <coughs> the public, please. <coughs> podium. Hi, I'm Corrine Baker, 244 Exeter Road. I've served on the Recycling Committee since 2011, even though the committee was actually formed in 2008. But in 2011 is when the town distributed the new trash and recycling carts and began getting serious about recycling. I've chaired the committee since last March, and my term actually ends tonight. At last Monday's Board of Selectmen meeting, the Recycling Committee was sunsetted. This was unexpected, and I'm here to ask the Board to reinstate the committee. I'm speaking during this public comment time because my request for an appointment with the board to be put on tonight's agenda as, quote, the recycling committee and upcoming meeting events was not approved by the chairman. During public comment time, I'm only able to make comments. I cannot interact with board members to get answers to things like, where was this item on the March 24th agenda? And why was there no discussion on the subject? What was the hurry? And most importantly, why didn't anyone question Vice Chairman Woolsey when she repeated, I just think they should be sunsetted? You all just kind of agreed with her. At the April 1, 2013 board meeting, Mrs. Woolsey made a motion to have the committee terminate on March 31, 2014. That motion was not seconded and died. This board didn't ask for a motion. You just went along with her. The March 24 meeting was the first meeting of this full new board. Chairman Bean read the com the, from the agenda item, new business, selectman representatives to boards, commissions, and committees, then said, are we ready for our assignments? At which point, Vice Chair Woolsey interrupted, saying, before we do, some of these committees should be sunsetted. A committee shouldn't drag on forever. They should be at the convenience of the board. Sometimes they just last too long. I think the recycle committee should be sunsetted. Selectman Griffin said, why don't we make that a discussion? But there was no discussion. Then Chairman Bean said, would you like to put that on the agenda for next week? But it was not put on the agenda. Chairman Bean said, how about let's go down the list, each one say which ones they think should be sunsetted. The Recycling and Heritage Committees were mentioned, but I think the Heritage Committee was dealt with at the town meeting, so the Recycling Committee was the only one sunsetted by mumbled consensus. There was no reason given. Vice Chair Wills, you just repeated, I just think they should be sunsetted. Mr. Welch said that all appointments to the committee <coughs> have expired, but this is not entirely true. We used to serve for three years on a staggered basis. I've been reading the past minutes of the board meetings, and at the April 15, 2013 meeting, Selectman Moore moved to, I moved to modify Tammy DeLands and Norm Silberdick's appointments to be for one year, ending March 1, 2014. This motion passed, but Tony Trotzer's three-year term actually ends March 2015. Eileen Latimer's term ends March 2016. <coughs> Mr. Moore's motion did not deal with the entire committee, just individual members. During last week's meeting, Selectman Griffin, Bridal, and Waddell each made a point to state that presentations should be made to this board before decisions are made, mainly for Mr. Waddell and Mr. Bridal's benefit. Yet the chairman did not pursue his own suggestion to put this topic on tonight's agenda and invite committee members to make a presentation. There was no discussion, no motion, no vote. Chairman Bean asked, do we have a consensus? And Mr. Griffin said, seems so. I have a packet here for each of you with background information on the committee and examples of what we are currently doing. We write articles for the newspaper, we have a blog, we have compiled a list of where to bring reusables. We have written letters to residents who are not complying with the recycling ordinance, 
gone into the schools to educate the children, been in the children's parade and the Chris Christmas parade, etc. I've also attached information on three events coming up that we'd like to participate in concerning um, information and educating the public. On April 5th, this, sa this Saturday, a representative from EcoMaine would be joining us at the high school flea market as a nonprofit service project. On April 17th, we'll be near the hazardous waste collection event and the garden club plant <coughs> sale with Celestina Serpentina, the official recycling mascot as voted by the previous Board of Selectmen. Also, we're looking to coordinate a community cleanup day in conjunction with the Department of Public Works and the Northeast Resource Recovery Association's 2014 Litter Free New Hampshire program in May. The application for this event, which came to our committee from Mark Richardson of DPW, is included in this packet. I would ask each of the selectmen to read the information in this packet so you will know what it is you are putting an end to. I think you will see that a decision to do away with the recycling committee or any change that this board may make <coughs> calls for your having more information in order to make a decision based on facts, not on one person's agenda. The committee has no budget. We are all volunteers who care about recycling continuing to educate residents about recycling and helping to enforce the town ordinance that says mandatory recycling. Our work is ongoing. The two warrant articles on the March 14th town warrant dealing with recycling and solid waste removal did not come from our committee. We did support Article 28 which came from the Board of Selectmen and addressed specifics of Chapter 420 solid waste. Article 43 was a petitioned article presented by Mary Louise Woolsey to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste. Our committee voted not to support this petition. In closing, I am asking the board to reinstate the recycling committee. We still have work to do. Resident voted, residents voted in the recycling mandate. The town has set a recycling goal of 50% and we are hovering around 30 we still have a long way to go. If we are not doing the work, who will be picking up this task? Thank you. Thank you very much. Where do you want me to leave this? Uh, please bring it towards the, the board. Is that the, our packet screen? Yeah, probably just hand them out. Please, please, please do. Yeah. There's a magnet there. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fine. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll put it in the record. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Good evening. Tammy DeLand, 12 Warren Avenue. I've been on the recycling committee since 2011 and it is my understanding that we are still a committee. At last week's meeting no motion was made and no one voted. We were just kind of brushed under the rug. Our request to be on tonight's agenda was not approved and I feel as though this board did not follow procedure in this matter. Last week's agenda did not state that any committees were to be sunsetted, just the selectmen's representatives to boards, commission and committees. Had we known that we were to be sunsetted Monday night, we would have been here to speak on the subject. The 2014 campaigns were run on the basis of listening to the people, and this is clearly not the case. I saw Selectman Bean last weekend, and I asked him if the meeting on Monday night would be sunsetting the recycling committee, and his response was, we have no intentions of doing that. The recycling committee has accomplished a lot. Tony and I had delivered approximately 40 letters to businesses, we hand delivered them, to businesses on Route 1 with a decal that reads, we cycle, we recycle, excuse me, this business recycles. <coughs> the people we spoke to were very appreciative and have placed the decals at their businesses. I have kept the where can you recycle reusable items flyer updated with input from the committee that explains where people can recycle certain items. We continuously focus on educating children on how important recycling is. We were instrumental in having Ecomain for our recycling needs and hopefully we'll have them for trash collection as well as they turn waste into energy. 
Our committee went on a tour of the facility as a volunteer group and we enjoyed it very much. We learned a lot. The recycling committee does not have a d budget, therefore we do not cost the town any money. As Karina had mentioned, there is a blog um, on the Hampton, Northampton patch that I keep updated as much as I can. And we also have information that we publish in the newspapers. We also have some potential members that would possibly like to join our group. We currently have ongoing efforts, as Karina had stated. The most recent event will be held this Saturday, April 5th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have a space saved at the Winnicott High School Craft Fair slash Flea Market, and Eco Main and Celestina are recycling mascot that was approved by this board of select, the Board of Selectmen, would also like to be there. The event is to raise funds for the Student Ambassador Program that has a 19-day trip to Italy, Austria, France, and Switzerland planned. The purpose is to immerse students in culture, history, and government. There'll be at least 40 vendors there from homemade jewelry, baked goods, pampered chef, Mary Kay, and Tupperware, just to name a few. They'll also have some raffles, and the admission is free. And this event will be held inside Winnicott High School. I also ask that you reconsider your decision as we are all passionate about recycling. We care about our environment for our future generations. Now that the recycling and solid waste ordinance has passed with over 2,000 votes, I would like to know how the Board of Selectmen is going to enforce this ordinance without the help of the Recycling Committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Tony Trotzer, 39 Mill Road. I'll be very brief. Um, I just wanted to read from the Hampton Master Plan, the vision chapter, under the section Solid Waste and Recycling. Um, uh, just a couple of the um, items in there were to continue aggressive support of the town's recycling program at a cost-effective means of managing waste disposal costs and reducing the waste stream. Another one was to increase the amount of recycling in our single stream mandatory recycling program. And an another item was to investigate a community composting program as a further means of reducing waste disposal tonnage, supporting the recycling program and offsetting waste disposal costs. And I just wanted, you know, we're talking about plans that we had to continue as a committee and one of the things that had been mentioned was uh, continuing to write newspaper articles uh, both for the Hampton Union and on the patch and I just brought along a couple of samples of uh, articles that have been in the newspapers and I just wanted to pass them along to you. Thank you. Thank you. They're just single copies so um, yeah, I didn't make copies for everybody in the interest of saving on oh, okay. paper. So, you know, just get to get a sense of what he's been doing. Thank you very much. Further public comment, Mr. Silberdick. Uh, Norman Silberdick, 70 Tide Mill Road. I'm not going to echo uh, my fellow members of the Recycling Committee. I'm very disappointed because, Rusty, you and Rick, Part of your platform when you're running for office that you were successful, and I congratulate you, I was listening to your constituents. And we asked, especially on something as important as this, about having an appointment with this committee, the board, to discuss the recycling committee and whether it should, should remain or should be sunsetted. I think it's insulting to all the members who put a lot of time and effort into work for the community trying to perpetuate a noble cause in increasing our recycling to uh, deny the appointment especially when you did not formally terminate the committee that is totally within your rights to do that there's no question about it but it just seems to me that it's words that we're not having an interaction just one-way communication so I go home I have no idea what your thinking is. I just think you're making a terrible mistake. Thank you, Mr. Silberdick. Further comment? Yes, ma'am. I'm Bonnie Searle. <coughs> I live at 16 Peniman Lane. And I just would like to tell you that 
the recycling committee puts out wonderful information and it, it tells you what what they will what we can put in our bins and what we can't and this is an example there's I've got several in here um, I, I save everything um, <coughs> I'm not sure what the public understood regarding the recycling committee um, from last week's meeting. I, I sat there and I couldn't believe my ears, except that it's history now. Um, I have some questions um, regarding the recycling committee that any good reporter um, someone that works for the Hampton Union might want to um, <coughs> include in an article. Um, was the DPW director, uh, was his recommendation that the committee be uh, um, terminated? Um, or was he even contacted? Uh, and I learned from um, Corrine Baker, I think that Hampton's uh, participation rate is 30% and that we should be at 50. It doesn't make sense to do away with a committee that's doing such a good job uh, to sunset it or to do away with it when, when you're trying to get to 50. Um, it looked like on TV that um, this board of selectmen, the current board of selectmen, had it in for the committee. And I certainly hope that isn't the case. Um, or did you just, do you just have it in for the last, for the board of selectmen that uh, recommended those people be appointed? Okay. Thank you. Further comment, please? Yes, Mr. Moody. Art, Art Moody. Uh, recycling. <laughs> uh, this isn't related to what on, on before, but uh, last week I was surprised to learn that you don't pick up, you do pick up recycling at places you don't pick up trash. As you heard previously, in the master plan, it was all, recycling was all based to <coughs> reduce the waste stream big tipping fee in Rochester get, and getting the trash <coughs> there, it was to save bucks. So why would you pick up recycling when you're not obligated to pick up the trash? You're making more expense, <laughs> not reducing it. Take a lessons from the Massachusetts towns. They don't pick up recycling alone. Another item under recycling is the uh, fire chief's 2000 Taurus sedan that I mentioned before. The manager came in in the last board and said they'd like to have it just categorized as surplus and you voted it. The next week came in and says it's really bad. I don't want public to have this car. It's dangerous. So I'd like to give it to or sell it to a junkyard or whatever. And you voted that, or the previous board did. And I had testified that I think the taxpayers that paid for that ought to have a chance at a town auction. And we heard last week that the manager has his staff collecting items for the town auction, which may be a two-year thing because I don't remember it last year. Uh, so I'd like you to reconsider that. Give the tax a taxpayer they might like to fix that up a chance to bid on that. Uh, I saw it being used uh, to deliver uh, 
fire fire officer for a private detail. You know, maybe it was over a year and a half ago. <clears throat> but and in, in since that time, I've seen it in different places in the parking lot, so it, it has been used. Uh, we don't have any junkyards in town, so you ha because zoning says we don't. So you'd have to go out of town to get rid of that. And the last item I'd like to uh, mention, which is also related to solid waste, <coughs> uh, not recycling, uh, is the 53B question. Solid Waste District, that you got a uh, previous board, <coughs> had the town meeting vote in favor of a year ago to withdraw from that district. It was established in 1988 uh, as of 6 <coughs> uh, June 30th, 2015, which may be the, it may be the end of a solid waste tipping agreement with Rochester. That might end then. Uh, well, we haven't heard any much about that the year since we voted that. And I'd like to have a report from the town's standpoint about 53B. Uh, they have the last couple of years been putting a report in our town report. And they have sequestered last year over 50,000 of surplus. And, and, and I think we pay almost half, half of that to the district of 10 towns. It's supposed to be 14. Four or five didn't join the biggies. Uh, now they're sequestering this, and they've hired a, an engineering consultant for future services to the district. Well, if they're going to build a transfer station for the other towns, I think we should have gotten out before. But. Uh, Please give us an update. I think the town report says the director of DPW is the <coughs> representative of Hampton to that 53B committee. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment, please. All right. The schedule calls for uh, Mr. Tinker, and I'm, I'm going to ask you to hold for just a second. And under old business, we were going to bring up uh, on a, uh, a less thorough, I think, perhaps. Uh, now that recycling members or former recycling members have spoken. And we'll discuss uh, the recycling committee right now. And if I can ask uh, our town attorney the legal status of the committee by virtue of the sunset and what, what is the legal status, then I'll go to Mr. Welch, then we'll go to the board, and we'll entertain any motions. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, my understanding is that the recycling committee is an advisory committee to this board and its existence is owed entirely to what this board wills it to be as opposed to some others that are statutorily grounded. Thank you. And by virtue of any sunset provisions that, that may or may not be um, uh, part of this board, uh, what is the exact status of the Recycling Committee this evening? Um, I've, I've not studied that question. Uh, prepared for that one tonight. But Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Welch, any comment? I think, Mr. Chairman, if the board wants to sunset the committee, I think you should take a formal vote. Thank you. Selectman Wilson, comment? I'm prepared to make a motion. To, uh, to I respect what the Recycling Committee has done, and I have participated with the Recycling Committee. First of all, we have no authority to enforce, none at all, under New Hampshire law. You're talking about 30% recycling. You've probably heard me for a number of years talking about enforcement, and we're given the guidance from the <coughs> chief of police, et cetera, that we cannot, cannot, because of privacy concerns, go ahead and enforce recycling provisions. And that's a concern of mine, and since we can't, you know, I, I think we got off to a good start when the recycling program was first brought in. Uh, I don't know where we're going to go with uh, recycling uh, collection uh, rates, but they seem to be sticking pretty much in the 30% range. And until and unless the public decides to do the sensible thing on its own, uh, I don't see any 
any reason to waste people's time uh, doing. You've, you've all worked hard. I know that. I respect what you've done. But uh, I think that there should not be permanent committees. Committees should be set up like the Waste and Recycling Committee was set up under Mr. Lally that worked, I think, for two years and then was done. And then you, uh, you guys pretty much replaced that. But I don't think selectmen should be setting up permanent committees that just go on and on and on and on. There's a time and a place for them, and I think the time for this particular enterprise is over. I think we need to move on from here. And I am comfortable uh, making the vote and supporting a vote to sunset this particular committee. I'm sure there might be others in the future that we might be interested in. Thank you, Madam Selectman Griffin. Well, <coughs> I will have to say that part of my decision was made from um, being an observer in the past. I think the Recycling Committee has always done a nice job, but there's been a lot of talk at the Board of Selectmen about sunsetting it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've heard about it many times, and I w I, to be truthful, I wasn't aware that you had so many programs um, in, uh, in the works. But you have always done a good job, and I think that you've brought it to everyone's attention about how important recycling is. And just this week, I had an interesting <coughs> um, experience. I had so many things to put in my recycling that next thing I know on Sunday, because they pick it up on Monday, I'm like, I've got stuff all over my counter that I have to wait to put into the recycling. Then I realized I had some more recycling in the other room. And I thought, well, I'll just take it and put it in the neighbors. And I went to put it in the neighbors, and there's only two people that live there, and they have big recycling containers. Their recycling was full. And I was amazed at that. And I did think to myself, you know, it has a lot of your work has done a nice job. So, you know, again, I wasn't aware that there were, you had all these programs in the works. But also, I want to address the fact that having been publicly proclaimed a flip-flopper by Mr. Silberdick two years in a row, I'm not going to vote on this unless I have to, because I would be a flip-flopper, and then he would be right, because I've never agreed with him in the past. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Oh Bridal. <laughs> well, now, <coughs> um, I, I appreciate this, the uh, Recycling Committee coming in and bringing this information, obviously. Uh, when we came in, we did not have enough in, a lot of information last week. I know when we were working on our assignments on committees, the, the only uh, thing I was working on at that time was whether we needed to have a selectman's rep on that committee. Uh, as far as, as, <coughs> as a recycling committee, I, I don't know. I still want to look at it a little bit more, personally. Uh, I think there is some good educational value there. Uh, but um, is, if, has the committee outlived its usefulness at this point in time? Um, it's hard to say. Thank you. Anything else, sir? That's it. Mr. Woodell. Yeah, I, I, first of all, I'd like to apologize to the recycling committee. Should have listened to you first, absolutely. And you had some good ideas. And I and I will say that when I left last week, I said to myself, was that was that a good decision that I made? And it probably wasn't. And and I agree that I'll take a different stance here. I guess I agree that that a lot of what you do, do and a lot of recycling changes, and it probably <coughs> should keep going. So that that's my feeling. Thank you very much, sir. And I'd like to thank the uh, the members that came in, and, and if I could specifically address uh, Mr. Land's comments, and I, and I think it speaks to, I just want to stand up so I can see you, and saw you and your lovely grandmother at the, um, at the, uh, at Hannaford's. And I think it speaks to the strength that we don't collaborate that much, and I said we don't have uh, an intention to do that. It was a new board. I had never spoken to Rick about it. I had never spoken to Rusty about it. I had never spoken to Mary Louise about it. I never spoken to Jim about it. They had never spoken to me about it. So uh, when I said that, I meant that. And then when I heard comments tonight that do we have it in for a prior board, this board, I know, doesn't have it in for anybody. And, and that's just not the way Hampton operates. So uh, I just wanted to specifically address those two points. And now I'm going to sit down and thank you for coming in. Good. I, I thought that you were kind of surprised when I asked you that question. So. Yeah, it's Hannaford's and I'm shopping. And <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it, was, it was lovely to meet you and your mom, or you, yeah, your grandmother. Yeah, and thank, thank you, Tammy. And then um, in terms of this issue, I, I just asked 
uh, council this evening. Is the committee officially sunset? I've asked uh, Attorney Gerald a couple of questions, and he's not prepared to answer them tonight. So what we will do is we will put this on the agenda for next week. Good. We can, we can uh, perhaps hear some more of your comments. Um, we've spent a good half an hour on it. It's an important committee. It's an important part of Hampton. And then we'll entertain motions, and, and we'll take it from there. And uh, I think that's what we're going to say on this issue tonight. Thank so thank you for coming in, and I think it served its purpose for your discussion tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Roman 5 appointments, 1, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, a 2013 property tax abatements. Good evening. Good evening, yeah. I'm just here to address, uh, I submitted nine abatements, 2013 abatements for your review this week. Um, total refund amount is $1,430.01. Um, any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I'm hoping for your approval. I'll move that we accept and sign the abatements uh, presented by Mr. Tinker. Uh, there will be a second, perhaps, and then discussion. The number of them, Ed? Um, nine total. Nine abatements. Second. Second. Discussion, please. Thank you. It was very informative. Here. Gentlemen, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Denials? Do you need Do you need a vote on those? Um, I think it's just the approval of the nine. Uh, a few of them are denials. Two of them, actually, out of the nine. Oh, okay. I thought we were voting for the approval of the... Oh, I, I see what you're saying because <coughs> I think I thought you usually split them um, to approve the abatements and then well it's an either an abatement or not but I usually don't split them but we can so I for have the record just clarify that we're approving seven abatements requested by Mr. Tinker and two denials for request mm -hmm. of abatement right yeah, yeah. is that reasonable I, I like that we and, should and, segregate and, uh, a, a, a second on that modification yeah yep and all those in favor Unanimous. Thank, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, thank you thank for the you. clarification. Roman 6, approval of minutes. 1, March 17, 2014, page 1. I also move the approval of the minutes of March 17, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any corrections by any board member? I'll second it. Second it. And does anybody feel a need to go through each page no. for corrections? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 6, approval of minutes to <coughs> March 17, 2014, non-public session sealed. So moved, Mr. Chairman, to Second. accept. Second. Thank you, ma'am. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 7, town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, for those residents who might be eligible for a veteran, an elderly, or a blind property tax credits or exemptions, there's only 15 days left to apply to make your application. Um, please see the assessing office. There are forms that need to be filled out and signed, so you'll need to come in and get those forms and complete them. Our work continues on the interior and exterior finish of the Church Street pumping station uh, with the station currently in operation. And there, is, there are no problems. So far, it's been running very smoothly. The demolition permit is in process for the old pumping station. We expect that work to be sometime in the near future. The board has received the drafts of the first nine warrant articles for the 2015 annual town meeting. So uh, we're trying not to keep you waiting for those. So we've given you nine of them to start with. Um, Household Hazardous Waste Day will be held on Saturday, May 17, 2014, at the site of the old courthouse, 130 Winnicott Road, from 8 a.m. to noontime. Please see the flyer that's online. The request for the uh, a JOP with the Town of Seabrook is a joint operational proposal with the Town of Seabrook uh, for the beach raking in Sun Valley has been removed from the to-do list. I have spoken personally with two of the selectmen and our request will not be answered. The Town has no interest in assisting us in that area. I believe Selectman Nichols also had an extensive uh, conversation with the Town Manager prior to the Town elections and nothing has come of that either. Uh, <coughs> the 10-minute parking ordinance has been sent to the State Department of Transportation for concurrence and we're awaiting their response. Um, Chairman, I also have a couple of other items. I was given today a request by the Tax Collector's Office to let everybody know that they're going to be closed on Wednesday, April 16th for the annual spring meeting of the Tax Collector's Association and the Department of Revenue. 
I also received today from the Department of Public Works a frost ban road posting that uh, I've been asked to announce the implementation of a 10,000 pound maximum weight frost ban limit on the following roads. Coal Farm Road from Mary Bachelor to the town line. Timber Swamp Road from Exeter Road to Mary, Mary Bachelor Road. Little River, Barber, uh, Watson's Lane, Mill Road from High to Town Line, Anne's Lane, Mace, Lock, North Shore, Cusack, and Drakeside Roads. And I believe the police department's been notified of that, so I don't recommend you take a 10,000 pound load over it. Is there, uh, is, there any, um, is there any posting at the end of industrial drive where it comes out onto Toll Farm Road? We have yeah. a number of trucks that, that take a left there and try oh, to sure. go to 95 oh, all yeah. the time. We just might want to have one there to remind people that... There is a no trucking sign there. As you turn left out of coming out of the Merrill Industrial Park, there is, a no le there is a no left turn there for trucks. You have to turn right and go up to Exeter Road and exit that way. I can tell you that we've stopped a number of trucks uh, coming down Mary Bachelor Road and mm -hmm. coming over towards uh, the, the industrial park. And what we, the police department found out was that uh, they're using a GPS device. Right. And <laughs> the GPS device has, for some reason, have them going down Mary Bachelor Road and coming down Timber Swamp Road and, and Toll Farm Road, and it's, it's very confusing. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> informed a number of the truckers that, that it's, it's, it's a posted road. They're not supposed to be there. Uh, and we have asked them to uh, uh, tell their dispatchers to get a hold of the, the folks who are making up these, these wonderful electronic uh, uh, routing, routing systems so that they can stop that from happening. We certainly don't want them there. The road's too dangerous for that. Um, these these uh, postings are in effect now. They weren't in effect this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning at, uh, actually tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, the House Committee uh, will hear, uh, our general government will hear, uh, Mississippi County government will hear Senate Bill 219, which is our bill to uh, obtain more interest on cemetery funds by allowing direct deposit from the cemetery mm -hmm. uh, uh, the commission directly to the town trustees so those funds can start earning interest immediately as opposed to waiting a whole year for a town meeting warrant article to go mm -hmm. through. So that will be heard on uh, at 1:30 on Tuesday, up in the State House uh, room. I believe it's 3:10. Fred, is that the um, session law, so called, that applies only to Hampton, or is that the uh, RS, general statute, the RSA of general application? Right. The general application. Good. Uh, we have a <coughs> received a letter from the State Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. announcing that they're going to be holding an informational session a public informational meeting in Hampton Falls that affects both Hampton and Hampton Falls on replacing the Taylor River Bridge at on the interstate. Uh, this eventually also uh, is supposed to replace the dam that's there. And I'll rem remind people that uh, we had quite an exception to their prior attempt to use uh, to replace that dam. Uh, there is 77,000 cubic yards of hazardous waste behind it. We certainly don't want that released in the harbor. We were told that uh, should that be released and, and come into, into Hampton Harbor that uh, the harbor probably would die uh, simply because the hazardous waste will kill most everything there. Mr. Chairman, that's it. Thank you. Questions for the town manager. Selectman Wilson. Oh, my, Fred. Do we have questions for you? Joint operation plan. Where are we going with that? I gave you my little <coughs> contribution last week. Do we have any any way of getting together or are you just handling it with the state or how where are we going on that the JOP has been given to the state um, I, I transmitted it to the uh, uh, to dread myself uh, I have had a contact back from dread mm -hmm. the only contact so far they've made is that they wanted to clarify that the town had passed the ordinance not allowing beach raking into the transfer Yay. station and we told them they had uh, and I've heard nothing since not that I'm surprised. Uh, I believe the other JLP expires tomorrow, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Right. I just uh, I can't uh, I can't tell you. Um, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. Okay, I appreciate that. 
and you'll keep us <coughs> updated eventually. Oh, yes, as soon as I hear something. Fire station parking lot, station one, which is now the uptown station. I asked a number of times when that bond was floated for the construction for the Winnicunit part whether the dreadful conditions in that parking lot would be abated by the uh, funding in that bond. Have we figured out whether there are sufficient funds left? That parking lot really needs to be redone, resurfaced, re-somethinged. It a does, mess. and we have done as much, in that wor much work in the parking <coughs> lot as we can, which is very little. So and there's there essentially funds. no money to, to do it. That's disappointing. Um, there has been a tree trimming uh, on Toll Farm Road and in that vicinity. So uh, just to make note of it for you and for the public, it's good to see the utilities are continuing to trim so that we don't have big problems with, huh, with ice. Health Trust. Where are we with the Health Trust? We got a notice on March 3rd. Uh, the Health Trust is issuing checks and all this stuff. Now it's talking about uh, 2012 and 2011 medical dental surplus to Health Trust member groups. <coughs> um, and it's, it, well, you, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Are, do we have any inclination at all what's happening with years prior to 2010? I mean, it, you know, the we received the 2010 funds, right? Uh, and we've received everything up, to, I think, through 2012 mm. at this point. The case that was brought, I believe, started with the 2010 funds, right? So uh, I, I can't tell you what they're going to do with funds that may be there from years before that. It's been, it's not part of the case that went before right. the I state. Right, I understand that. Uh, what I can tell you is that they have pledged to do refunds in each of the following years. Yeah, right. Uh, um, because from my discussions with members of the Bureau of Securities Regulation, uh, they had indicated that once there was a successful conclusion to the lawsuit, which was, which was initiated because of the change in the law that actually put some teeth in, in ha and bringing them to accountability, that if that was successful and once it was concluded that there would be possible probably to go back to 2003 through 2009 because they were committing the illegal activity then as well. So I, I just... Uh, I can't tell you what the state's planning on doing. They haven't talked to us about it. So. Okay. And, try not to be too worried. Um, no through truck signs, duck signs, new green and blue road signs. We have any clue when that stuff's going to be able to uh, go up? I know manpower is a problem. It is, but they've been asked to put those up. Uh, the frost is now coming out of the ground, mm -hmm. so it'll be easier. They need to do every one of those with a, uh, um, a notice to all utilities so we can have every one of those sites marked mm -hmm. before we can put a sign up. So they're in the process of getting through that, that process. I, th I think, I could be wrong, but I think that we still owe some of the streets, the new big, there are big some. lettering. Yes. Yeah, uh, both the private roads and the, uh, and the public roads. Yes. And I ran out. That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin. Um, I was going to um, ask you from talking at, at the beach about, I was talking to Mr. Rage and he asked me to ask you about, uh, I, do you, is there a, a truck that the cable committee has used that's going in the auction? There is an old truck that the cable committee had used. We have it stored at the public works facility. Mm -hmm. uh, and the intention was to um, literally sell it if we can. Does it have very much value? Not really. Yeah. Because he asked if they could just leave it there to use as a storage. Storage. And that's what they, evidently, that's what's been yeah. being done with it. If uh, the board would like to do that, and, and uh, I'll ask the public works director, maybe we'll put it someplace probably more secure. Yeah. Why don't you ask him, and out then there we right can, now. we'll bring it up again. And okay. If you check with them and see if that makes sense. Yeah, happy to do that. Because Mr. Rage did ask about yeah. that. Sure. Thank Absolutely. you. Yes, sir. Nothing right now. Nothing. Select my Nothing. I have one quick yes, follow up, and I apologize, but <coughs> the uh, at the precinct meeting Friday night, this did come up, and I think that we need to have a feel for it. 
Station 2, which is now the beach station, is not going to have a dispatcher, so there will be no full-time presence of dispatch in that station. And at times when the crew of three is pulled out, it's my understanding that the station is going to be secured because the commissioners are talking about having some kind of a shed for their parking area, and they were asked about a bathroom for that shed. And by the way, we need an update on the bathroom to the Church Street shed. But um, I was told at the meeting, and you were there, Rick, that the uh, commissioners uh, were going to allow the public the use of their bathroom, which of course is upstairs. Is there a separate entrance for that? And when that station is vacant, are we going to have the public just walking into that station un unsupervised, unattended? And do the commissioners have a separate key to the bathroom upstairs? How's that going to work? No one's brought this up to, to just now, so well, I haven't heard I'm about it. Well, I'm bringing so. it up if you'd be kind enough sure. to think Check about it. Check with the chief and, and find yes. out what's going on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Roman 9, I'm sorry, Roman 8, Old Business 1, Adoption of the Rules and Regulations Relevant to Public Tree Preservation and Protection. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, um, we've been through a, a series of, of town meeting actions and we went through a series of actions of the legislature. Uh, we asked them to allow us to appoint our own tree warden in town and instead of doing that, they rewrote the entire general laws on, on trees. Um, and, and that also gave us the privilege of appointing our own tree warden. Uh, town council examined that, indicated that uh, we needed to put some, something in the warrant for the annual town meeting, which we did. It was passed. At this point, uh, we have the ability to uh, formally appoint a tree warden. We also have a requirement within the statute to actually have tree rules and regulations for that ward, warden, uh, tree warden to, uh, to work with. These are those. Uh, as you know, the Public Works Director has been functioning as the tree warden. Uh, he has reviewed all these. Town Council has reviewed these. Uh, and we would like you to pass them. And next, if you do next week, we'll have a formal permanent appointment for a tree warden. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Yes, I, I have a comment. And this has concerned me for some time. Um, duties of the tree warden. The tree warden shall help to care for, maintain, protect, and perpetuate shade and ornamental trees and shrubs located within the town's public ways, commons, parks, cemeteries, and other public grounds, and to advise the Board of Selectmen from time to time as to the needs of his department in managing the arboriculture, ornamental horticulture, forestry, and landscapes of the town, etc. We have a jewel of a park at Five Corners. The trees are not in very good shape. They haven't been cared for. Every time I bring it up, we're talking about money, 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 money. If we're going to be doing some of the things that we're talking about, because this sounds very nice, I'd like to know where the funds are coming from. I know we have had funds for trees in the budget in the past, and we end up by cutting down the trees in the cemetery or whatever. But Part of what I think we should be doing, and the uh, planning board and other entities have been talking about beautifying the town and so forth. I think our little parks, the end of Lock Road, um, on Park Avenue, uh, all, all around the community are, are the little jewels in our local existence. And they're just not, the grass is being cut. They're just not being maintained. There are some trees that should be taken down, maybe new ones planted. And I'd like to know where we're going with that, because if this is just going to be another piece of paper, I agree with what's trying to be done, but I'd like to see a little more proactive um, interest in caring for our public lands. Thank you. Any further comment? <coughs> Who's going to be the tree warden? Keith. He's going to continue to be the tree warden? As part of his other duties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I agree with uh, Mrs. Wolsey that many, uh, it's been brought up all through the years, but there's never any money mm -hmm. to, and that's why there's not anything done. All of those parks have been maintained by the Recreation Department in mm -hmm. the past. Yep. And uh, yeah. unless there's some, uh, 
money raised or uh, something done with volunteers, I don't really see how there's going to be very much done. Or is there? Not without funds. We need uh, a commitment in the budget. They are. We, we do need a commitment. This is um, this is one of the communities that would strike me as being the ideal community to be a Tree City USA. Mm. Uh, there are very, very few of those in New Hampshire. There are a few. Uh, but that means that we have to appropriate, I think it's $5.50 per capita each year. Mm. And we can include in that, that figure uh, mm -hmm. some of the money put out by the utility companies for maintenance of trees and tree trimming and, mm. and so forth. Yep. Um, we have a problem, and there's no question yep. about it. We have a lot of trees in town that need to come down because they're, they're dying or they're just too large for the area they're in. The Pine Grove Cemetery is an <coughs> ideal one where the cemetery trustees mm -hmm. would like to have those huge pine trees come down before they come down. Um, we have a number of areas in town where we have uh, maple decline, and those trees are dying on the roadside yep. from the top down. Eventually, we're going to have to take them down. But we don't have the funds to do that. We have a few thousand dollars in the budget. Um, we really need to come up with a heavy program to take care of the issues and problems that we have, and that has to include planting trees. Just taking everything down doesn't work. You've got to have some trees put back. So yes, and we'd like and to do that in the budget if we can. Hampton has a long history. I mean, th at one time, all of Route 1 was all treed. Today they wouldn't want that anyway, with all the cars going by, smashing into them probably, and be a danger. But Hampton looks quite different today, and mm -hmm. down on Winniconnet Road at the uh, Elmwood Corner, yes. this is a bread and breakfast or something, or the yes. uh, rooming house, rooming house yes. that had one of the biggest elm tree in New Hampshire mm -hmm. there, and that's where the road turns there. But we have to really look at what our priorities are and I think this year we'll be discussing many priorities so we'll see where this one comes out on the <coughs> list. Literally we're holding the line. Mm -hmm. Are we yes sir. We don't, we, we don't have the old Shade Tree Commission anymore. That's we do not. No. That's gone by. That's correct. They need money too, Rusty. Sons they need money too, right. right. And that, that's the thing. We, we're going to have to start looking instead of looking at just taking down everything, looking at yeah. replacing some of this, right? And uh, I think this is is a way to start, but we gotta we gotta put some teeth in with it as we move forward. This this allows us. And the prior board had discussed this because two mm -hmm. trees were taken down that shouldn't have been taken down. This will stop that from happening. These regulations. There is a process, a procedure in the statute. These regulations mimic the statute. So there is a process you have to go through to take a tree down. If it's a danger, obviously, that can be done right away. But if it's not a danger and it's a convenience, mm -hmm. that's something different. That's going to take right. some effort to get that down. Yeah. So, but we need, you're right, we need to organize something that will be effective and will show the community in its best light and provide trees where we need them. Thank you, sir. Uh, Selectman Waddell and then the town attorney, please. Yeah, I think this is something we should do because even if it doesn't have the teeth right now, you've got to begin someplace well, yeah. and you've got to get it rolling. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like you say, people can't take down trees that, that shouldn't be taken down. There should be some, somebody overseeing the, yeah. what's going on. And it, it's a good start. And I, th I think we really should you know, go along yeah. with this and see what we can get and further in. Thank yeah. you, sir. Uh, just as a reminder of what the town meeting adopted, uh, as the manager said that the, t the uh, RSA provides the town may provide for the appointment of the tree warden. That's why we had an article on the mm -hmm. on the warrant. And uh, the way the article is worded is the town manager, with the advice and consent of the selectmen, appoints the tree warden. Then, uh, under section two of Article 34, the tree warden promulgates the rules and regula regulations. Uh, if approved by the selectmen after a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So we should, uh, this is before the board now for your input right. more than anything. And the manager's done a wonderful job, by the way, of marching through the no numerous provisions mm -hmm. of the legislature and adopted them and paraphrased them so that they do make sense on paper. So um, I would just recommend that uh, this be put on for a public hearing after any board comments on specifics and that the tree warden uh, be uh, appointed and then he mm -hmm. uh, would uh, say I promulgate them and the board would approve them. Does it say anywhere about the tree warden raising money? 
Um, raising hell, but not money. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he can accept trees. <laughs> if someone wants to donate them, he can accept them. There's a provision in here for that. Thank, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, I uh, have a, a, a quick couple, and uh, uh, I understand uh, the need for uh, funds. And my particular attention is drawn to the to the uh, rules and regulations that reinforce uh, a procedure that, uh, whether it's town employees or the town of Hampton or private citizens that nobody goes out and cuts down trees. Mm. Um, and that has happened on That's our true. watch. Mm -hmm. it's, it has happened on what is a historic street in front of a historic property. Yep. And that is Dearborn Ave. Right. And uh, it is uh, is as historic as any other town, street in America. And that specifically is addressed in removal of trees, notice to abutter, abutters, uh, injury or defacement. And if we had had this um, last year, um, notwithstanding the clarion call for funding for this position, uh, those trees would be there and that street would look a heck of a lot better. So uh, I, I think there's a consensus that we'll continue to review this. There will be a public hearing uh, Correct. when Mr. Welch uh, says there's going to be one on the agenda. Okay. And we'll follow the, uh, the guidelines from the town attorney. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. Um, old business. Any other old business? And let me just start with protocol with, with uh, Select and Wilsey, please. Old business? Um, I. Uh, oh, yes, in fact. Money. Fred mentioned possibly two weeks ago that there's a possibility that he's going to recommend to this board at tax rate setting time that we surrender a million dollars from the unreserved fund balance to help offset the tax rate. When Fred came to the town as the manager, came on board in 2007, the cupboard was bare. The unreserved surplus was in the neighborhood of $700,000. Rick, you are going to remember this, I dare say. And then the boards from then on, um, with maybe I could say with Fred nagging, uh, tried to build up some of the unreserved fund balance to help protect the town and DRA has also been basically uh, really requesting that towns take uh, two and a half percent? Seven. Oh, seven percent. Five to seven on the Five average. to seven percent. Uh, s securing the funds for something, uh, some unexpected uh, circumstance coming up like our uh, suit that we're in with next Terra, the po uh, potential abatement, if uh, they should prevail, of uh, $1.6 million. Where's that going to come from, folks? So I would propose to you once again, if you look at the most recent sheet, and I have the unaudited financials as of January 27th, uh, Mr. Schwarzer has an estimated 2013, tw end of year, unassigned fund balance of five million eight fifty two eight forty five. If we choose or should choose in the fall to surrender a million of that, that would drop us down to four point eight whatever, and then you're really on a slippery slope. I think we've got to be really seriously looking at sources of revenue and I'm going to be discussing um, the buy-in sewer fee for all these developments that are getting ready to sprout, especially down at the beach. So I just want you to realize that I am going to continue to be <coughs> pushing that. And uh, two years ago, the selectmen, and once again, Rick will remember, uh, put an article on the warrant to increase the sewer connection fee. That's just the labor for for the man to go and check that you're hooked up properly and make a little diagram of where that system is. But that's minuscule. That's just paying for a public works employee's time. At the same time, Fred had brought forth the concept of the wastewater system buy-in fee. And that board ignored the advice. It's taken us now, well, over, over a year. And now we have the engineers working on that to get an exact figure but what I'm going to be asking for is for this board to see if we have the authority to institute the buy-in charge 
on our own initiative under 149I and then uh, set a, an arbitrary charge per bathroom and then if and when those uh, I shouldn't it shouldn't say if but when the engineers get the final fee predicated on all the intricacies of the wastewater treatment plant then we can either refund or charge more to developers but I do not want to waste the opportunity with all these developments going up to be able to charge for that buy-in once the buildings are built obviously then the taxes that you and I pay will apply to them as well but just I'm dropping the penny in the well because I think we really need to to think about that thank you ma'am any further comment no. Select the Griffin, please. Is that something, uh, <coughs> Mr. Welch, that this board does, or it's something the planning board does? It's actually something this board does. Uh, you control fees in the sewer department at this point because you are the sewer commissioners at this point. Mm -hmm. the, the concept here is one you need to investigate and understand. <coughs> um, the concept here is to charge for capacity. We have a finite capacity left in the sewer system. And each new building, each new development that goes in takes a portion of that capacity that you as the current residents of the town have paid for and, and, and maintained over a long period of time. But hasn't the people that already been there when there was a previous building, didn't they pay? And uh, wasn't there other capacity being used? Well, they didn't pay. We've never charged for capacity. But how can you charge one person when you don't charge everyone? Well, you only Everybody pay. else gets it free. You're only paying when you buy into the system. What In other about words, the developer that paid for that hotel so that they could put something there? It, it's it's like any rate. If you decide you're going to do that, you're establishing a rate, <coughs> and and you may decide not to do that. That's 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 the other side of the issue. If you do decide to do it, then you would be charging. Uh, for the so the sale of capacity in the system, mm -hmm. that capacity would no longer be there for anybody to use except for them. So you to do this, we would have to have public hearings, oh. invite the public in, and we'd mm -hmm. have to be given a lot more information than what Mrs. Wellesley's just given us. You'd need a ton of information. You're going to have to have a ton of hearings. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have a, a, a significant amount of effort to get there from here if you decide to go there. Mm -hmm. I distributed in your packets the I know, but you're not the one that we're going to be looking for for the information I'm sure well, that's just too bad I mean there's there has to be a lot more information oh, yeah. available and you know we, we have to hire a, a professional <coughs> firm to do this one that is well schooled in how this is done uh, the cost is somewhere between 20 and 25 thousand dollars to do it it's not inexpensive mm -hmm. it would be part of the cost of running the sewer system <coughs> um, we, we are looking for a sample contract from those folks so you can have an idea mm -hmm. of the detail that's involved and, and uh, I believe that's on the way as a matter of fact Good. so we should have that soon uh, there's a lot of work involved in this it's mm -hmm. not just a simple thing that we can it's not like setting a sewer rate right. which applies to everybody in town and and it's equal for everybody this is this is quite different Mm -hmm. You're going to have to take some time in examining it and understanding it before mm -hmm. you're even prepared to make a motion to go ahead with it. Yeah, I mean, I can see how there would be a lot of, uh, I mean, people are buying businesses that are already there that basically those people, they have bought into the community just like everybody else. And they're expecting to sell their the, what they bought in for it to the next person. That's so correct. I'm sure there's many, many arguments here. Yep. There are. Thank you. 16 questions and 42 sides to every one of them. <laughs> what I wanted to bring up was about the um, Board of Selectmen meeting schedule. Usually we've talked about it before this point, what, anytime there's a new board. In fact, I believe last year at the very first meeting when they changed <coughs> everything, they also changed this. This is a copy of the way that it's been in the past. Yes, sir. Modified for this year. Um, so I'd like to bring this up to be discussed or to just make the motion that we meet every other week during the summer which is what has been done for many many years in the meantime if we need to have um, <coughs> more meetings whenever we've been di uh, directed in the past we've uh, uh, anyone here on the board I've never seen anyone question it and there have been 
times when we ha have had meetings, and there's always, as you, you gentlemen are going to find out, there'll be many other meetings that we will be having. Um, the only one that I question on here is April 28th. What's the significance of that? Is it a holiday? Okay. I gotta go look. This, this calendar doesn't tell me the answer uh, to that question. Uh, I don't know. Do you know, Rusty? I don't know. Yeah. No. Bill, can I have a copy of that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> it's what? what? Arbor Day. <laughs> well, I don't really see. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> just talked about chopping trees. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I would like to move what this except 12th? for April 28th. What about but May 12th? What's that holiday? That's, but that's always been part of what we've done in the past. What is right. May 12th? Right, if, if I may, there's a motion. Can we get a second and we'll have discussion? Is there a second for the motion? I'll second up for discussion. Second and discussion. Discussion. What's the holiday on May 12th? Myself I'm not birthday, the one that made this list that hasn't up. Been declared this is a national uh, holiday yet. This has been done from what's been done in the past. Uh, well, the past is the past maybe 10 years. That's, that's recent in the 375 year history, Rick. Well, in the nine years I was here, we never had a problem. And I don't really know anyone that shares uh, your view that we need to meet every, uh, this is not what I hear from Fred or from Christina or from other people uh, that are involved here. Well, what I think is that we ran for office to sit here and undertake our duties for this town and I don't think we should slack off and just because we want to take days off in the summer just sit here and wait and let the work pile up. I was mentioning to Jim when I sat down tonight the six months between now and October when we set the budget and we get ready for, for the Warren articles, we're going to fly by. The next six <coughs> months are going to go right by. We'll hardly even know they've gone. And there's a lot of work to be done in this town oh. between now and then. Okay, thank you. I would and like and to point out that the Budget Committee doesn't even meet in the summertime. Okay. We are period. not Budget oh, Okay, committee. this is kind of a dialogue, and, yes. and I know uh, Mary not. Louise has had her comments. There's a motion. There's a second. <coughs> Rick spoken. I'm going to go to Rusty and then you, Jim. I, uh, I've seen this work in the past where they've, where, where they've taken, they've done every other weekend, every other week in the, in the summertime, and it appears that it has worked and worked well. Um, the looking at this calendar, the April 28th and the, and the May 12th, I don't get what those are, but I, for, for June, July, and August, and into September, uh, uh, I don't see a problem with, with meeting every other week. I've noticed our meetings are only about an hour and a half to two hours long here. Um, I know that sometimes in the Everybody has, there's a lot going on for our department heads in the, in the summer, so at some point in time, they need a little break too, and if we're meeting every week, uh, and if they're expected to be here, I think uh, we, can, we can get the work accomplished on the, the every other week schedule. So. All right. A anything else, sir? Okay. okay. Yes, select more, though. I, I have no, media, no, no problem meeting every week. But I have a, a problem meeting and in, in, in not being productive. And I think if we're being productive and, and we're, we're organizing our work that we don't have to meet every week probably. And I think that, as Rick said, if we need to get here, we call an emergency meeting and we come. I mean, I can think of, from my experience in Concord, and Rusty can relate to this probably, that when you guys used to meet on a biennium every other year, they got a lot more done probably. Then they went to meeting both years and just people just meet to meet and I don't know if that's necessary one thing I would like to say is when we were doing the fire station uh, you know at the beach and that particular summer there was a lot of, uh, were a lot of and meetings. we just called more meetings yeah. all, no, almost every week for you know a certain point so it's not a, an issue to I mean, do I, that. I could go with this as long as it's up to the discretion of the the chair or the town manager to say we need to get together, we need to have a meeting, Absolutely. therefore it's July 7th is a meeting, it's, it's canceled. Does that mean I could go with this? Thank you. Uh, the schedule uh, that has been proposed, uh, it is a uh, call for uh, meetings. Uh, uh, according to the schedule, <coughs> uh, per my discu or your discussion, April 28th there will be a meeting, May 12th there will be a meeting. Is that the consensus? 
uh, and then uh, I will just say that I'm not going to be here May 12th just by chance. <laughs> okay. That's not why. So you put that in there. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saying it now. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, I, I believe that the, the previous trigger was Memorial Day mm -hmm. and Labor Day. That's what I so thought. So September 15th and September 29th should be stricken as well. Yes, September, yeah. I That's didn't. Fine. I did not put this together. So I, I didn't either. That, so. yeah. Rick looked at his <laughs> vacation calendar. <laughs> there, there has been a motion and a consensus that no meetings on the 28th, the 12th of May, we'll uh, the 28th of April, 15th September will be meeting, uh, the 20, 29th will be meeting, we'll be meeting the 28th, we'll be meeting the 12th. Rick will not be here on the 12th. Uh, there <laughs> is that motion on the floor. All those in favor? For uh, support that motion. Those opposed? And with Selectman Woolsey opposing, the measure passes four to one. Thank you very much. New business. Any other old business? Well, I just wanted to ask also, Mr. Welch, Sir? What, what is this about the bathroom at Church Street? I'm not aware of this at all. The board voted to um, put a bathroom for the employee at the Church Street parking lot. And my understanding is that, I haven't seen it, but my understanding is that we have received permission from the church mm -hmm. to put that into the facility. Um, the into the church? No, no, into, into the parking attendance uh, cabin. I don't see how we can build on private property. We can't even go on to pick up the trash. How could we possibly build a bathroom on private property? They've given us permission. Um, I don't know. That just doesn't sound right to me. The board asked for permission. It was granted by the church. We need to take part this of a under deal. advisement. So, under advisement, you we need to, to have put it on the agenda. To get that parking lot? No, that's uh, illegal. I don't understand why you don't want trash. It's illegal. Down. How can you build a bathroom on someone's l property when you it's don't own it? If I, I don't if know, I, it if sound I can, right to me. if I can, uh, everybody has a chance to speak here. And if I, I know, can, we're getting you all excited. No, no, it, it's 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 all good if we can uh, minimize the dialogue and everyone will be heard on the issue. Your, you had a question on the bathroom. I want to put on the agenda that we can so talk please, about. So please, please see uh, Christina and Mr. Welch, and we can put this on the agenda. Anybody, um, and we heard tonight where uh, an event or a phenomena, an issue wasn't on the agenda. And if we mm -hmm. missed the mark the first time, I missed the mark. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to hurry. We're going to get it right. And if we don't get it right the first time, we'll come back at it, and we'll get it right the second or third time, and there'll be a vote. And there's plenty of time for people to discuss things. And I just ask that we have less dialogue and we go around. Mm -hmm. Old business, any other old business, sir? No. Okay. Just one quick comment on, on, on Rick. Does it need to be quick? Okay. Is uh, I we, we lease that parking lot, don't yes. we? Yes, sir, we do. So it is, we do have a, an agreement with them on mm -hmm. uh, a agreement with them on that property. So yeah. it's not like it's just going on to private property. Yeah, it's a long-term lease. Right. Second of all is last week we, we heard from Mike Schwartzer on the uh, the uh, ambulance fund there, or the yes. medical, yep. and so we're not we're not ordering that a second ambulance. That is correct. Sir. How is that going to affect mm. uh, the fire department budget? With ask with respect to obviously, if we're not going to order the second ambulance, what is there any additional maintenance and stuff that has to be done on that the ambulance that we're keeping, and that's what it's going to cost us. I mean, I just want you know the. The previous board here took some money out of that account a number of years ago. Oh yeah, um, over three hundred thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And if that money had been left in there, we would have had that money in there. So um, if we were collecting on the bills, we get the money. Um, so I, I just want—I'd like to find out what projected costs are going to be for for repairs on that the ambulance that we're going to keep. Same thing as the repairs on the 88 pumper. That's absolutely. I would try to find the answer to that question for you. Anything else, sir? Select my Waddell. Old business. You all set? Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, Roman 9, new business. One, collective bargaining agreements. Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Chairman, last I heard, uh, they were postponing this until next week. So and that's good enough for me. We will be postponing this and putting this on the agenda for next week. 
I notice the paucity of representation. Thank you, sir. Uh, awesome. Roman 9, new business number 2, 2014 Highway Heavy Equipment Bid Waiver. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, members of the board, the um, prior Board of Selectmen had instructed us to go out to bid uh, for certain types of equipment before town meeting so we would have an actual cost. In this particular case, we're talking about the, the replacement sweeper for the, the street sweepers that we have. Mm -hmm. We have two of them that are used, and they would both be going. The, um, the bids that were returned were only two of the three that were required. So in order to do this, we need to have the board to give us a waiver. Uh, the cost um, is $180,025. Uh, there is a trade-in on unit number 99 of uh, $35,000. There's a trade-in on unit number 51, which is a very old sweeper of $2,000. <laughs> so the net cost is 143,025. Mm -hmm. That is the low bid. The high bid was 149,500. Um, with the with the board's permission. Um, they wanted to add, uh, the, the bring the total. They wanted to add options to it, which would bring the total to uh, 143,700. Um, those options included uh, special mirrors, um, so that they could see both sides of the vehicle and towards the rear. Um, there would be a, a remote control uh, heater in the cabin. Uh, some, sometimes when they're working down the beach, uh, this, it's quite cold. Um, there were amber strobe lights that would be that would go on as well as special tail lights, a backup alarm, uh, two forward floodlights, an amber high power strobe light, and the operator's manual. Uh, that includes air conditioning, dual steering. As so you have two steering positions depending on which side of the street you're operating on, which was what we currently have and dual instrumentation as long as as well as dual ride seats. So that would bring the total cost of this piece of equipment to one hundred and eighty five thousand seven hundred less the trade ins would be one forty three seven, which is within the appropriation request. And that amount again is one hundred and forty three thousand seven hundred dollars after trade ins. Is there a comment from the board? Is there a motion? I well I'm, I'll move to waive, but I have a comment. Yes, ma'am, please. The floor is yours. Oh, do I have a second? Sorry. Seconded by Mr. Bridal. You know, we've been working on this since last summer. The bid price that went to the public was 185 understanding that there would be trade in value. And we ought to pay whoever's taking away the oldest sweeper because that's in been rotting in the public works yard but I would truly like to know where all that and I'm not saying it's not needed but I'd like to know where all that stuff came from I mean I think well we I think we should have been notified and I know personally that this was in the work since last summer there's been plenty of time to put that together and if they need the heater and the mirrors and the flashing lights and the whatever, I really think that the board should have been told before dropping it in our laps tonight. I'm not cross at you, Fred. It's not. But I, I really think that if... I would feel better if I felt that the complete package was put together and that I we knew about are, are you talking about the $675 yes. difference? Yes, okay. yeah. Okay. And it's, it's not a huge amount, and it's certainly coming in the guesstimate of the 185000 <coughs> minus whatever uh, we could recoup by a trade-in. But I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little bit aggravated that if that stuff is needed on there, I think that we should have known about it. I don't know how Phil feels, but we were sitting there, and we kept asking, you know, for bids and confirmation of what was going to be done. I can only give you what I was given. I know. Bless your heart. I know that. Thank I you, ma'am. And coming back, uh, sir, sir, also, uh, ma'am, I mean, sir. That will teach you to sit over here. <laughs> I, I see the mustache, Mr. Waddell. Uh, he calls me sir, too. Yeah, though. yeah. 
Um, I, I just, it was $675 mm -hmm. added. Yeah. Plus, I mean, those are just kind of things yeah. that would be in there anyway, so so I just see it as... They just should have been in there when we were told. Got you. And, and no just just for... Uh, Nick Pickett. Thank you. Uh, the, the percentage, uh, the delta on that with the 675 is 0.00374948%. You drilled uh, right down on I that, did. didn't you? Um, <laughs> there, there is a motion. There's a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. starts looking Thank at us and saying, hey, you, then we'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Out of 16 decimal points here, it's <laughs> serious <laughs> trouble. R Roman 10 entertainment licenses under yeah, review. Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are two entertainment licenses under review by the various public safety agencies. One for the North Beach Bar and Grill at 931 Ocean Boulevard, and the other one's for Ron's Landing at 379 Ocean Boulevard. Thank you, sir. Continuing, uh, Roman 11 Consent Agenda. Oh, God. Also moved. Second. And uh, in terms of the, uh, the numbers, are of, of Mary Louise says there's sentiment to have this read. Number one, 2014 report of appropriations actually voted. Number two, there's a new elderly exemption, there's a new veteran tax credit, a new blind exemption and veteran tax credit renewal. Mm -hmm. There's a requalifying elderly tax exemption, there's a requalification of elderly taxes exemption and veteran tax credit. There is a requalification of veteran tax credit and there are numerous uh, names and lots under each of those uh, items. Number three, entertainment licenses for one tavern, Ashworth by the Sea, Ocean Gaming, Logan's Run. Number four, termination of lease 3-5 H Street. Number five, new lease 3-5 H Street. All those in favor? And I abstain. Vote is 4-0-1. Closing comments. Seeing none. Select my Wolsey. No, thank you. A motion? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, sir. 2 p.m. Seconded by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you.